Okay. Are we done with GPU? Should we go to the ask us anything and then we can also ask answer more GPU questions? Mm. Or is there yeah. anything else from this page? Yeah. I think we are good, I would say. A huge number of the questions in our daily grad session are about getting GPU stuff to work. So yeah. if you can't get it, it's okay. Just yeah. come and ask. It's normal. And, and if you're interested about this, we have a course, Python for Scientific Computing, uh, where I've given at least talk about how to use Conda. So the talks are in Code Refinery, I think, Code Refinery YouTube, and the materials are in in our web page. You can get a link there or in the Code Refinery page as well. And yeah. and they're like, uh, we try to go through the process of how do you like get the corresponding like mm -hmm. uh, toolkits installed and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the notes then. Mm -hmm. Um. And hit auto scroll. Yeah, like uh, whoever has the dependency thing at the bottom of the screen, can you move it? Because then auto scroll doesn't work. Um. Yeah. Um. There's a question there. Can a metaphor be made for the past example? For example, Conda, TensorFlow, PyTorch, etc. Um. Oh, and can someone add a new section uh, for Q and A? Yeah. And maybe the feedback stuff. My hands are a bit full, and as you know, cat is the yeah. most important thing. Yeah. Um. Post example: TensorFlow, PyTorch, CUDA. Mm -hmm. That's like, like uh, I would say that, yeah. I mean, TensorFlow is a library that helps you to use the um, chicken cooker because it's a lot mm. harder than a chicken cooker to use. Mm. And almost like, I no would... one goes and tries to use the chicken yeah. cooker directly. Yeah, I would say that like maybe maybe there, it would be something like 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 if you think about you want to cook the chickens in the GPU, right? And mm -hmm. you don't want you want somebody to probably like prepare them beforehand, like butcher them and, and that sort of stuff. So basically mm -hmm. like the CUDA toolkit is the is the person in the in the store that uh that makes certain that the chickens are like prepared so that you can just buy the like the fini like the mm -hmm. the like the chicken in a way that you can just yeah. like safely safely cook it and it's not like uh doesn't have a skin and everything on it and that sort of stuff so basically like like it's it's a in the intermediate layer that that makes it so that like you can do the hard stuff on the underneath it yeah oh but yeah go ahead and please tell us like all the questions about anything from today yeah and also yeah like we might have guests joining us like other other rcs and other people from us joining yeah. us in the any in of the, the staff that are around should know where to get the studio mm. info how not need to do that Yeah, but 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 for the for the um like like with the GPUs, like it it has moved like the thing has moved rapidly throughout the years. Hi, Thomas. Hey. So so the it used to be that GPUs were like the only way of coding GPUs used to be that you write the CUDA code. So basically, you write C or C plus plus code, and then you compile that. Uh, and you use the CUDA toolkit to 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 like to use that, and and then of course people didn't find this like very nice in the long term. Like they wanted to do something else on that, so they created like many frameworks that that make it possible to do this kind of like stuff, so that you don't have to write the C code, the low level code. Uh, so so then. Uh, 
once you get that into that part, you still need to compile against this like low level code. Uh, so so what they do is they compile against this low level code. But then you run into the problem that okay, you need the dependencies for this low level code. They need to be solved. So okay, like how do you manage that? And then it's like okay, you need to have these packaging managers to manage uh, so the whole environment. And like uh, what I usually think about is that okay, what is the version of, let's say, PyTorch I want to install? And then let the guards of the packaging managers decide like what mm -hmm. versions of CUDA toolkit I get uh, so that like I don't have, like I don't know, the, the, the person who decided this thing was some guy in GitHub uh, <laughs> who made the pull request or made the build for, for a specific version of PyTorch. And and like some some guy in a in an open source community, like most of these are nowadays installed from Conda Forge, which is this open source community. Like some some guy who's interested about this or maybe is hired to do this, decided that okay, I will build my PyTorch with these versions, and then like they decided for me which version of Kuda Toolkit needed to be used, and I will trust them to to get the correct version. Um, I given I try to give an answer to that rule of some whether to use GPUs or just use CPUs. Personally, um, if whatever well, if there are tools around that support GPUs, go for them. Why not? Um, if you you can see how long it takes, and uh, it's uh, at some point essentially make the decision. Uh, is it worth waiting for the CPU uh, for the GPU resources? Or is it worth waiting for a long time to get the uh, to get your results? Um, commonly, the GPUs are quite a substantial bit faster. But I mm. personally would not start writing GPU specific code if if I'm not really pressed for time. So if, if yeah. I need, if I need to really start um, writing GPU specific code. Um, yeah, I, I would need to have a good incentive as in uh, my calculations take weeks and then, mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, maybe it's better to th think about whether GPUs could speed this up. Yeah, and no, often like, like the, the first question I would ask myself is that, okay, the scientific problem that I have in hand, who, what toolkits and what like things are there that solve this scientific problem. So for example, I already mentioned like, let's say Python, there's NumPy, uh, like the numerical library. Um, that uses these uh, libraries called BLAS libraries and FFT libraries that are like already existing solutions for solving linear algebra problems. And they are underneath the whole thing very heavily. So, so like, if somebody has already created a library, reusing that library is a very good idea. So basically, if I would want to do, let's say, machine learning, like traditional machine learning, I wouldn't create my own machine learning framework. I would use something like Skikit Learn or that is already existing, and, and I would just extend on that, or maybe PyTorch or something like that, if I want to do, if, if, if that's my, my goal. If I need to start from scratch, then the question, uh, like it's like creating a completely new code that doesn't have an existing, like mathematical solver for that. Mm -hmm. I still would try to look for existing mathematical solvers because I don't trust that my my matrix multiplication code is better than what the Blas people they have done it for twenty years or thirty years, uh, or even more. Like they have optimized it for different kinds of systems and edge cases and and for mathematical rigor and i don't trust myself to to do that sort of stuff so, so i would trust like the to use a lot as much as possible from people that have already like done existing uh, existing library and if those support gpus then it's it's more for me but but <laughs> yeah i com i completely agree i think there's there are few occasions where the oh well where the worst product in an in kind of basic libraries 
uh, has gotten more popular than the better one. Uh, the only reasons they uh, that well, there are two reasons why that happens from time to time. One is that the that's the that the worse speed wise one is way easier to use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usability is a big factor also in coding. Um, if I if I have an obscure, extremely fast solver for something, then uh, people might not use it because it's just too difficult to. Uh, and people can't really be bothered to handle that, and the speed up yeah. is not, or the speed up is not big enough, or uh, where this unfortunately also has happened, but that's not so often on open source uh, things, where one site got better publicity, so it kind of got into the market earlier, um, and essentially covered the market with their product. And also with the GPU stuff, I would mention that like. Like they, they throughout the years, there's been a lot of this kind of like situation because the field is still like now it's there's already ex like uh, established solutions for many things, but the field is still moving so rapidly that like like instructions on let's say how do you replicate my results, how do you replicate this environment, like they can be like very hard to follow even half year like after the publication. Like I. I submitted for for one pa paper that was published like, um, like, like last last spring, uh, there was published paper and some one of our users wanted to replicate that, and the instructions were already like broken even though it was like published like a half a year earlier, so so because the field is moving so fast, so there's this kind of like additional, um, additional, uh, uh, how could I say it like um, um need for for maintenance when it comes to these like more cutting edge technologies like some of these like mpi codes that have been running since the 90s they don't they haven't like you can see in the web pages they haven't like they haven't need to they don't have a like a pressing need to update necessarily the installation instructions because the technology is so like well like orchestrated and so like already existing but but for many of these GP codes, you need to do a lot more like yeah. these kinds of usability maintenance in order to make it replicable by other researchers as well. But it's it's of course it's it's great technology for many cases. But you really need to you you need to know if it's worth the effort and the hassle. On, please ask us more questions. We're here. Um, unless everyone just wants to leave early. But please give feedback. I see there's about 50 people watching now, and um, there's definitely not 50 answers here. Also, maybe people could answer in the feedback, why would you not attend this course? So in the past few years, the number of attendees has been going down. So of course that could be because all the material is online and people don't need to attend, which is actually a success. But we would just like your feedback. Is this um, mm, let's mm. see. This is like this would be good for us to know. Is the material good enough? We don't need to be here teaching anymore. Do you value us yeah. taking the time to go through it? Do you value the videos we're making? Are the videos good enough to replace those? Yeah, and also, like, what form of like training do you prefer? Do you prefer reading the manuals? Do you prefer like mm -hmm. uh, watching videos? Do you prefer these kind of like live courses where we were, like mm -hmm. do uh, like averaged uh, talk through of yeah. the manuals, basically? Um, There's a yeah, there's a question okay. about uh, yeah, what kind of what to do um, or when to come to garage and how much time to spend before. Um, personally, I would say uh, if you have kind of used the search function on our docs and didn't immediately find a solution uh, for your problem, drop by. That's mm. I think or or. If you if you if you have to spend like 10 15 minutes googling and you didn't find anything useful um yeah drop by that's perfectly fine mm. 
Yeah, the, yeah. the garages, like the, there was a question, are these similar to these Zoom sessions? Yeah, it's basically like we are talking with each other about uh, like what we are doing, like having internal discussions. And when the customer drops in, we stop that. Mm -hmm. And then we ask what the, what the customer wants. Yeah. And then we try to like, uh, we usually we go into a breakout room and then yeah. somebody tries to help you yeah. with the problem. It's, ve it's but... very informal and we try to keep it that way. I think the, the, the point with the garage sessions and uh, attending there or coming there and asking is mm -hmm. um, we might, if it's something that we think, okay, this is already uh, on the documents and we have kind of talk we have the impression we have talked about it for i don't know how many times we might point you to a video or um yeah. to the resources that are available yeah i mean if but you can't that's find perfectly it. fine um yeah like if you can't com find coming this. in is perfectly fine yeah like if you can't find it and you come and say hey i search is there a page on this and then we tell you that like, okay i'll come back later like sometimes people come and go several times in a day or in the mm. hour as they try to work themselves some. Yeah, and the, the the overall overall like the goal of the thing is to 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 help you do stuff, right? Like the like mm -hmm. and whatever like makes it easier for for you to do stuff is is like if we can help you it's it's that's our job profile. So that that mm -hmm. helps 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 keep us employed if, if we have people <laughs> yeah. to help. So like yeah. Um, so in the long term, where do you think scientific computing is going? Like, will HPC clusters still be around in 10 years, or is there some other solution coming up? Or is that really, too... really went with a, with a simple deep. question to answer? Yeah. Like, I, I think personally, like, like, there's always going to be like the more the technologies move forward, like let's say, for example, what has happened with the chat GPT and that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. there's always going to be like the more, the easier stuff gets, like let's say it's per PyTorch, mm -hmm. like also like the, it, when we create an interface that makes it easier to access, let's say GPUs or in the case of chat GPT, you make it easier to, um, easier to use large language models. You create more demand for that thing, right? Like there's more people suddenly starting mm -hmm. to use that. And if you have more people using like the, or demanding this thing, it require it creates more demand on this, like the lower end side or, or the hardware and setting this up. How does this actually work? How do we manage this demand? How, do, how can we like do this kind of thing? And underneath all of it, there's going to be either like a cloud service or a high performance computing service. But I think like anyways, there's going to be something at the bottom that is going to require like low level stuff. Mm -hmm. And 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 knowing about the whole like the whole onion, like what's at mm -hmm. the surface and what's at the at deep in the is, is still going to be important yeah. because it makes you makes it easier to navigate the whole thing. What is the eventual queue system? Is it is the queue system like Slurm or in the cloud infrastructure? Is it Kubernetes or something? That doesn't really matter as long as you know like that. Okay, there's going to be some sort of a queue and some sort of an account, and I need to run my code in some sort of like a late, let's say virtual machine or a node or something. So so as long as you know how the like the sausage is made, it, it makes your life easier. And I think that won't go away ever um it will maybe maybe there will be more uh like yeah. more of these like bigger systems but i think there's still going to be these systems mm -hmm. um i would like to also add to the uh question is it an appropriate question uh, i think the the only questions where i would think a bit like um shouldn't you answer that question is if it's really the research question you have in mind mm -hmm. we, we we can help you with expertise that we have um but and we, we might actually have someone who has worked in the field um because most of us are originally researchers mm -hmm. but we are not the people to solve your research question mm -hmm. you, we, we can we can try to help you find the right tools to solve it um, but 
in the end, yeah. it's a bit this, you, you are the expert of your field. So you might need to explain to us what you're actually doing and what you're actually trying to achieve so that we can give a suggestion on, uh, okay, this might be a good approach to do that. But mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that's kind of, I think, for me, at least the limit of um, where, que where questions start to not make a lot of sense to a uh, sense anymore for me because if if someone comes in with mm -hmm. a question about um yeah. a very very specific niche uh concept of their mm -hmm. research field uh, yeah it yeah. might take quite a bit of time to me uh to just get what they are yeah. talking about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and yeah there's also a Good question about. <clears throat> I completely agree on Thomas's answer on the previous one. And there's a good question of what's the difference between Mamba and Conda. So basically, Mamba, like we we nowadays recommend Mamba instead of Conda for most things. So so Conda is this packaging manager that was already originally developed by yeah. this Anaconda Incorporated, or it used to be Continuum Analytics, uh, the firm. They basically created this kind of like okay, let's. Let's make installing these data science uh, environments, like virtual environments, easier because, like the mm -hmm. many Python packages, they depend on these libraries, like like for example, CUDA toolkits and that sort of stuff. And installing them via PEEP can sometimes be quite complicated. So they created this kind of like packaging manager that can do this, and it like got popular. And then people created this Conda Forge, this this kind of like distribution channel that people can distribute basically like like Linux operating system to wherever Linux system you run. So you can like get a very reproducible and well, some, somewhat reproducible environments in all kinds of different kinds of like computation systems. And for that, they use some packaging manager called Conda. And this Conda is, was originally written in Python and it contains this kind of like sets all over that tries to solve these environments. Like, okay, I want these packages. I want these versions, and mm -hmm. and that that was pretty slow. So what people did is that they they did what what I mentioned previously. They used already existing like low level SAT solvers that have been created, and on top of that, mm -hmm. they rewrote basically Conda functionality in C plus uh, plus for Mamba. I, I it might be Go go nowadays i'm, I'm not uh, certain i think it's okay. c c still but but anyway like some low level code that rewrote uh, basically the uh the the conda packaging manager and it's much more faster than uh conda when it solves the environments because it uses these low level sat solvers to mm -hmm. to solve the like how do these packages want to like these packets need these packets these yeah. packets need these packets and it solves the environment for you yeah down a bit a little bit to the uh different programming languages are there for different purposes and um the additional if you uh if you try to stay within a, one of the languages you might get stuck with uh potentially the disadvantages of it and python has done a really good job in essentially incorporating other languages and making use of other languages being really fast while Python being really convenient. So you have things, yeah, you have things like what Simo mentioned earlier with um, NumPy that's calling essentially C and other highly efficient libraries. If you would implement the same thing purely in Python, it would be pretty slow. But since you can just call other functionality, it's fast. Mm. Yeah, like that's kind, kind of the problem of Conda mm. here. Yeah, like there's this kind of like, like okay, there's like somebody creates like a uh, somebody creates a new fast thing, like like low level thing that is fast, and then somebody creates like an interface for that using some higher level, uh, like high, higher level. I mean, like like easier to understand language and easier to write language, like Python. And then, um, then people are like, okay, that looks nice. I would want to use that. How do I install that? And then you first have like installation instructions that are very cryptic, very technical. 
And then somebody's like, okay, I would want to this to be easier. And then they create like a packaging manager or something that, that installs it. And now you have like a packaging manager that does something really complicated. <laughs> like it, like, like you, you start to have like this kind of like cascade. Mm -hmm. And then there are of course, like alternatives, like for example, Julia is quite popular nowadays that does, um, try to do, try to be fast and easy to use at the same time. And, and there's different things, but, but like there's this kind of like, usually there's a fancy new stuff that is hard to install. And it's because it's hard to install, nobody can use it. And when it becomes easier to install, more people start to use it. And and then it starts to get bigger and bigger. And then somebody figures out, okay, let's let's create a new thing. This this old thing is too bloated or it has mm -hmm. it's too like it's it's not nice anymore. And then they create a new fast thing and and then it, that's how the yeah. circle of <laughs> software life or scientific software life basically progresses. Yeah. And Python is always there on the background, like, like I like that thing. I will take that thing basically. Like I will incorporate that into my ecosystem, and they're very good at doing that. Yeah, I, I'm a good Kraken. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I take that and that. Um, can I give some comments on the overall future of your careers? So. There is usual, usually comments that our courses are both too basic and too advanced. So here we see more people said too advanced, but it's really hard to give a course that's both simple enough for everyone and advanced enough for everyone. Because what we're doing here is built on so many layers. I think I've said this before, but there's like this linux um command line that underlies everything and then there's like data storage which sort of fits in there then there's the connecting to triton then there's the slurm and then finally there's your program that you're actually trying to run on there and when you know all of these um little things down below using the cluster is not that hard but most people starting your career and in this course that's not the case. So you might know little bits here and there, but most people don't know all of them. And many don't know any very well, and that's okay. So the point of this course has been to give a big overview that has something for everyone, but most people do need to go follow up some. But this also means don't get frustrated here. There is a lot of new things to learn. And maybe you want to learn it, maybe you don't. Um, you have a choice on where you'll go next. Um, yeah, I, I would uh, add to that that like yes, it's it's like like a lot of this complexity is like technical complexities mm -hmm. that that are like for historical reasons. So there's like or like there there is a reason for that, and that was mm -hmm. done like twenty years ago, and and something like mm -hmm. that. Like there's lots of like. Because it's an incremental process when these things happen. So there's like lots huge amounts of like this kind of like, okay, why why Mamba or something? And then like I will give a like a ten minute explanation why it's like why it's <laughs> like that way. Yeah. But uh you don't necessarily need to like know all of that. You can just like mm -hmm. go straight to the like the what we try in this course also like we try to like cut to the chase and, and get to the like actual meat of the subject like okay mm -hmm. it's not so complicated if you if you don't care about all of that baggage that comes in these technical things so yeah. so like and it's a good idea to usually like look at or try to like yeah go go through the things and try to cut through the technicalities and get to the actual okay what is the thing that i need to focus here and what is, what is the thing? And then, of course, it's complicated when there's so much stuff coming. Like this course probably is overwhelming for many people. And that's unfortunate because like we, it, it, like it would be better if the subjects wouldn't be that overwhelming. But, yeah. but that's, yeah, we try, we try to still give like a condensed version of the information, but there's so much information, but don't get overwhelmed. Try to like, try to, check what is important to you and your case yeah. and like just use those that information for your yeah. benefit 
Okay, um, let's see. I mean, there, there's the question about uh, using on demand on Jupyter mm -hmm. and whether things are closing uh, automatically. Um, at least for Jupyter, um, if you uh, click on, uh, I think it's shutdown, so file shutdown, it, uh, the job is fin uh, will be finished, so okay. the job will stop. If you just close the the, the tab, um, the job is still run, still run, and you can um, essentially uh, manually delete it in the um, interactive sessions tab. And uh, delete there just means that it it calls s cancel, so it cancels the job. <laughs> so. So it, it looks bad, like, oh, do I want to delete stuff? Like, what, what will happen? But it actually, it just, like, cancels the job. So so it's it's a bit more like, yeah. <laughs> and yes, if you if you click on delete while, you're, while you still have the Jupyter tab open, the Jupyter tab will essentially disconnect as well. Yeah. For advanced courses, that's probably other people. Oh, there was follow-ups that I had started writing here. What would you recommend people to do next? Then we can end. We have a page, Python environment with Conda on SkiComp Altofi. Um, I think the path is... Um, I think this is the right path for it, but yeah, this tells you a lot about installing your own software in Python. Um, we have two other big workshops that are also live streamed. There's Code Refinery, which is more um, sort of version control, software testing, like software development, tools for researchers, and a Python for scientific computing. Of course, that's also live stream. Through Code Refinery, you can find other workshops, which are by our partners. And while CSC has the big training calendars with all kinds of advanced things. But for particular pages of SkiComp Altofi, people should use should know for Alto usage. Is there anything else that we really have to do? What I would just suggest for people is that like, like repetition just makes better. Like, don't worry about it too much about you using the cluster. And, and there's never like a really a good time to learn new skills, right? Yeah. Like, there's always stuff to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you you have a next deadline or next thing to write. So, so yeah. you just at some point, every every one of us has to bite the bullet and and just like start using a new thing. Like, <laughs> we just yeah. we just have to like start like if we. If, if we want to use a new thing, we we can we don't have to use new things. Like I still use the Vim, for example, when VS Code exists. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> and we get we get yeah. uh, like thrown into our own like habits. But but if you really want to use a new thing, the best way to use it is just to try using it as much as possible. Yeah. And and like in the cluster, you cannot like you shouldn't be able to do anything that hurts anybody else except yeah. like maybe reserve resources that somebody else might use but but it's not like it's not a big thing so to so just try try using it and yeah. and if you run into problems then contact us yeah okay should we say goodbye and um hopefully you can use this later and you know how to find this if there's more any final words i guess not okay thanks a lot then yeah thanks for attending yes thank you bye Bye. Bye.